In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about the texture space function as it relates to applying a procedural material to an object. I recently did a video where I talked about the texture space function as it relates to applying a bitmap to an object so that you can make it look seamless. But now we're going to talk about something like a procedural bump map that you would want to apply to an object and not have any seams on that and also not have to worry about UV mapping. I've got this Atari 400 model that I built a few years ago, and the actual physical product has a subtle but very noticeable bumpy quality to the surface that's very easy to replicate in Blender. But if you're brand new to this, it can actually be a little bit daunting. So let's do this. I'm going to press the question mark key to take this object so I can isolate it. And we're going to come up pretty close. And we'll come over here and we will take a look at it so that we can see it in a preview mode that will allow us to also display the work that we're about to do with nodes. So the node setup is comprised of three basic node groups. One of them is the core texture node. There are two nodes that control the placement of the texture on the object. And then we have a couple of nodes that control or adjust the output of the actual texture node itself. Then we have a fourth node that is the bump node that goes into the normal function of the principled BSDF. So what we want to do is come to add, type in noise, noise texture. And in order to visualize this easily, we can drive this directly into the material output color into surface and then you can visualize very easily what's happening with that node now that we've gotten that in a place where we can kind of visualize it to make sense of what's happening right here we need to first come over and adjust the texture space on the actual object otherwise you're going to add nodes for texture placement and you're going to have to fiddle with those to try and make them look right and this is the missing key that a lot of people don't know about come over to the object properties we're going to come down to viewport display and enable texture space you will see a bounding box appear to the object that conforms to the size of the object and that's really the critical key right here is we don't want it to conform to the object because it's squishing the texture come down to the object data properties to the texture space entry disable auto textures find the largest value and type that in and I'm just going to do 0.17 to make that easy. And there we go. So it conforms to it. But in this particular case, you can actually make it smaller. Let's say that you had a series of objects in your scene that we're going to have this bump applied to, and you wanted to be able to use the same values that we're going to be putting in here. You would want to necessarily use the same size over here in the texture space. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to type in 0.1. And that way, I can reduce the size and we'll still be able to see the effect. But one thing that we can see right off the bat is it doesn't have the compressed appearance that it did when we first applied this noise. Make sure that that's understandable. I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to compress one of these to one tenth of its size. And you can see how that clearly compresses the texture. So now we're going to come over here and we're going to add another set of nodes. Make sure that you have the Node Wrangler enabled in the add-ons. It's built into Blender and it really facilitates this. Select the Noise Texture, press Shift and W, and go to Add Texture Setup. And now you don't have to go hunt for these, but these are the two nodes that we need in order to control the placement of the noise texture on the object. By default, it's applying Generated. The Noise node, by default, was automatically applying itself and generated, even if we had not turned this node on. But now we are going to be able to control some of the other parameters by having it enabled. Generated automatically uses this texture space data in order to know how to apply that noise texture to the object. So if we come down, we can see in scale that if I change this value, it changes the scale of the texture as it relates to the object. But what's a little bit counterintuitive is the fact that scale operates in kind of an opposite way that you would think it should. So we type in three, you would think that scaling that would scale that texture up relative to the object, but in fact it made it smaller. Well, that is a little bit confusing. But what it's doing is it's taking this box and it's taking a unit of the actual texture and taking three of those units 
and applying it with inside of this texture space. Let's come over here and return this value back to one, and let's take a look at another option. If we come up to texture as opposed to point, then it actually operates the way you think it should. So for instance, if I wanted to reduce this overall texture appearance in half, now I would apply 0.5 and it would give me that smaller texture. So it's just an option that you can play with. So for instance, if I came down and I typed in 0.25, then it's smaller still. It's totally something that you can play with as a preference. I'm going to go back to the default because that's what most people are going to end up doing. So I think a value of three is what I'm just going to leave this at. And this is where we could also come over to the noise function and play with the scale. So for instance, I could then type in a value of 20 and I'm starting to get kind of an appearance of a texture that I like, but it still needs to be much smaller. I'm going to reduce it, but I do want to come in here and sort of take a look at what happens when we play with roughness as an example. So if I drive roughness all the way down, it gets a little bit smoother. And if I drive roughness up, it gets more gnarled. So I think I'm going to take that to 0.25. It's a good, happy medium. And then I'm going to take scale and I'm going to drive that up to 150. And that really gives me about a size that I think is appropriate for this object. The next thing that we need to do is add the modifying node. So we need to come in to add and I'm going to type in saturation hue saturation is value is what it's going to isolate and we'll drop that right there and we're going to take saturation down to zero because we're going to be driving a bump value and we really only need in fact we only really specifically want grayscale values now that we've removed the color i think there's not quite enough contrast we could use it but it would be nice to have it be just a little bit more contrasty so we're going to come over and search for contrasts We'll put that right there. Let's first take the brightness down a little bit. I'm going to try point minus point 0.2. So that's good. That brought that down. And contrast, I don't know. Let's try point 0.5. In fact, let's try one for the contrast. You can see that I think that works pretty well. So the next thing that we need to do, let's move this out of the way, is add a bump node. We'll drive that down there and I'm going to take, let's zoom so we can see this a little bit more closely. Take the color output and drive it into height. But before we push it in, let's be aware of the fact, let me zoom way down here. By default, the values for typical models are way too strong. I just want you to be aware of that. I'm going to drive the value down to point 0.1. Strength is typically the value that you'll adjust first, and distance is sort of a secondary modifier that can modify the strength. I don't know why they have two values that essentially do the same thing. I'm going to drive the principled BSDF back into material output, and then we're going to drive the bump into normal give it a second to calculate and there we can see the appearance of the bump we can kind of see it over here as it appears on the surface there's another way that we could accomplish this so let's consider this now to be an option b to replace two of these nodes with a single node so i'm going to press the x key to delete those and we're going to come down and we're going to search for a color ramp place that right there. In this case, we're going to take color from the noise texture and we're going to drive it right into factor. And let's do this. I'm going to drive this back into the material output so that we can visualize that. And you're going to note that what it does is it automatically desaturates for us, which is nice. And then we can adjust these two endpoints to make the noise texture more contrasty. You can also play with a couple of these options I kind of like that. It's nice. It just produces a more smooth output. So this is a great way of replacing two of those other nodes with one. And we take color here, drive it into height. And then we simply take principal BSDF and drive that back into material output. And there we go.